to the Academy. You're here with me, Charlie Tumblr, and in this video I'm going to be talking about four ways that you can improve your ground attack and level bombing game. And the mighty duck in our hangar here. So the first one is to generate a quick mission. We can. This is an offline version, so we can generate. Uh, where's the mighty duck? HS129. We have a mighty duck. Um, don't worry about your payload or fuel or anything like that at this point because we can change that in a second. You can change any paint scheme, but the important thing is you can have it parked. So if you want to practice startups, you can put it on the runway if you want to practice takeoffs. Or easier for us, put it about a thousand meters, and then we can set with the weather, time, and ground targets. So if you want to fly early in the morning, you can fly in the middle of the night. So if you want to practice night missions, you know, won't see those very often. Again, you can set the wind, the turbulence, the weather, heavy clouds, high, low, lots of haze. You can have the fog in the morning. So however you want it, let's put some clouds in. Let's go for a little bit cloudy. And you can also set the ground target. So here I've selected um, AA guns, tanks, artillery, trains and vehicles. If we were playing on a caban map you could also pick ships for practicing as well and that's awesome. If you don't want to fight any other airplanes in the sky then just select one of these icons that only has a single plane and you'll be left alone to do your own thing. And then the, the, the um, custom difficulty allows you to set whatever you want. Now if, if you're practicing um, object markers and aiming assist are great so you can see things straight away. Again bombing assist we don't really, need, if you're dive bombing, bombing assist is quite useful. Um, uh, but I tend to just have object markers, uh, techno chat so I can see what's going on, navigation markers so I can see where I'm going. Uh, Last spectators is a weird one. If you put that on, it means you can go to external view, which I find quite useful. I turn off the wind, everything to warmed up. And if you want, you could have unlimited ammunition. You could be invulnerable, which means if you're attacking AA, you won't be hit. And if you're unbreakable, it means you if you accidentally clip a tree or crash into the ground, you won't die. The thing with unbreakable is that if you do hit the ground, um, you then have to try and get the airplane airborne again, and sometimes that it won't actually work. You end up just driving around the map. So um, unbreakable maybe is not as good as you think it would be. And then it's up to you if you want to make everything really, really simple and turn everything off uh, or on. That's great, but I wouldn't bother with... You should be at a point, hopefully, by the end of a couple of missions where you won't need any of these on and we'll do that. Um, so we will start. So I've taken the, the HS-129, the Mighty Duck, and off we go. Before the mission actually starts, it comes to this extra screen where you can check everything that's going on. So you can see what targets it's going to give you. It's all always in a very, very small area, so you haven't got a lot of flying to do. But importantly, you can hit the Setup button. Now the difference of setting up here compared to doing it in the earlier screen is that you can move the plane around and then as you make the changes you can see what it's actually doing so we have um, 15 mil cannons they're in the in here for if you didn't know so we can upgrade those and again we can see that makes no difference to the way the plane looks if we throw on the 30 mil cannon you might think oh well where's my 30 mil cannon so we'll pop that on and we can see it's underneath with the little thin gun uh, what about if we put some bombs on it? Where do the bombs go if we put a bomb on here? So let's we're going to go tank hunting. So we're going to take these blue rounds. So the 103 cannon with blue rounds for killing tanks and uh, orange rounds which are high explosive there for killing pretty much everything else. So I'm going to take that uh, and then I've added a two 50 kilogram bombs. So where does it put those 50 kilogram bombs? They're external on the wings. So I don't need to worry about anything like bomb bay doors. It's all sorted fuel will just keep it relatively low. I tend to use a convergence of 450 meters anyway. Uh, you will find whatever number helps you. Um, and bomb time, and the weird thing with the game is um, you can set to all these different values. If you're dive bombing, always use five second fuses. For some reason, it lets you die. You can drop a bomb at like 20 meters up and it will always detonate. Uh, whereas if you use three seconds, it may be a 50% chance of that not going off. And then one second in contact, you'll contact your blaze up up, ace, don't want to do that. And one second fuses always seem to be in duds, which is really, really weird. So then we start the mission. Here we are in the air. So the game is loaded in. We've started in the air and it's asking us to press pause to unpause it. So just going to send my view. Now it starts you off. I would always check to see 
what it's got you set because sometimes if secretly if you're playing with radiators it might not be set the way you want it you may have to open your radiators uh, you may also be at full power and in, on a on a HS129 the duck it doesn't really matter but for other aircraft you'll find you burn your engines out so make sure you've got everything set the way that you want it before you get going and then you can have a look around you appear on the map and because we've selected few spectators and navigation markers and things so we're here shows us where we're going and we know that the targets are off there to the left so we can head off this way and we can go find something to kill so we'll go let's go shoot up the artillery and what I'll do is this is not a, um, a ground attack tutorial by any way but I'll just show you kind of how the targets appear from the uh, target selection list that we have you see that it's some um, trains artillery uh, vehicles, um, occasionally ships and things. You won't be able to attack bridges uh, as a level bomber. Unfortunately, it's not very good for generating missions, and we'll have to use another wave to train our level bombers. And I will talk about that shortly. Here we are. We're approaching the target area now, and because I selected object markers on, we can see these red dots that show that they are enemy plane, uh, enemy targets. We can just go on in. We can also see the ranges, which is very useful um, if you want to start learning how something looks at a particular distance. So my guns are set at 450 meters convergence range. So if I fire at about 500 meters, I get to know what that kind of looks like. And generally, if it fills the middle bit, boom, um, then it's about the right range for a perfect shot. And you can just go around plinking all day. And once you've killed all those things, there's only what there's a uh, the artillery set up the tanks the trucks and two more um, other targets over here once you kill all of those you just end the mission uh, and then you can just restart do it again change to a different map uh, if you choose a different air base you might get slightly different targets uh, and different maps will also have different aircraft and ground targets so you might find that the tanks on this map are m4s maybe if you change to a different map you'll have t-34s or you have um, lighter t-70s let's just have a quick look at this and there they are moving. So you can practice your, your ground attack and strafing on that. And once you've finished, just finish the mission, and off you go. Hopefully after a few quick missions you'll have a decent feel for your aircraft and you'll be ready to move on to the next stage. And we're going to go into the world of multiplayer and select dogfight. And we're going to look for a training server. There are normally a few training servers, and it will say training server generally like this one. But this is the best one that I found so far. 72 AG's training server is really really good. So let's go on to that one. And we'll join the server. Here we are in the actual server now. 72 AG's training server. It's version 45 at the time of this recording. And there are three main areas that you can work in. If you want to practice your air-to-air -air fighting you can start up here. Um, you'll need a teammate. There are no bots. Well, there is a bot. We'll talk about that one in a second. Um, and you generate one in the north, one in the south, and you fight each other. Or if you want, you can start on the ground and get airborne and practice maneuvers and that kind of thing, which, which is quite nice. The other version or other area is here on this airfield. And you can drive any tank. Uh, well, you may see something completely different to me. It depends if you what packages you own um, and what uh, collector's planes and things you've bought. You may have some of these uh, darkened out. Um, you can also start on the runway. Yep, that is on the runway and all of the aircraft are available and all of the payloads are unlocked and if you scroll all the way down you'll get options where you can take infinite ammo. And in this box you can start at 5,000 meters if you want to practice uh, level bombing in a bomber um, and the final one here is shoot training. You spawn right next to this very small box and what you have is there's a JU-88 and then a 109. Just go round and round in circles and very lazy circles and it's for very basic gunnery. Um, not a huge amount of training values, more just if you want to kill two minutes uh, and shoot down a plane or two. But we're going to spawn in. Ooh, let me just move this out of the way. This is just for general flying and uh, this is a factory target that's designed for the level bombers which gives you time to kind of pick a line in but you're obviously very limited because it's a small map you can't really do anything particularly fancy like if you're doing a multi-plane strike it's just for basic training so let's start we'll start here we'll take an i-16 with some rockets where's that little i-16 this should be the beginning there we go i-16 all of the unlocks are available so anything you can take 
we'll go for. So let's take six rockets. We don't need much fuel. Let's go crazy. Where's red? There we go. He's in red. And we can start the mission. Doesn't take very long. There's no pause button. You start live and everything is good to go. As always, check to see the, what settings you are on. Make sure that you're happy with it. And we can fly around. We have a map and we can show it. So the main thing this server is great for is for practicing tank killing uh, and practicing hitting um, artillery. So, uh, sorry, hitting AA areas. So this one has AA that's set on relatively low AI. This one has um, a slightly more difficult AA setting, but they're still not as good as in-game. And you'll see the targets are appearing on the map. Everything is, even though it's blue and red, everything is an enemy. Uh, you can kill anything. Uh, so these are moving tanks. We might want to practice against those. But if you're doing basic rocketry and gunnery, if we come over to this area down here, there are long, long rows of different tanks, and they're all arranged kind of in size order. So the ones on the left, as you look at them, uh, I've got my track out, so I can't do it. So the the left hand side of the line is going to be the big tanks, and then they're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So you might want to say, oh right, can can my 20 mil cannons do anything against this this tank? Not one of shooting like that. It can't. But yep, it did, it got it. So that's a little one. So then you can move up to the next tank, would it work against the next tank, and so on and so on. Um, that was a German tank. If we go off to the right here, these lines are Russian tanks. No, there's the German one still. Where are the Russian tanks? Those are Russian tanks, there you go. Yep, KV-1s. Big ones, T-34s, and that kind of thing, down to smaller ones. And you can shoot Russian or German ones, and it'll give you an idea of how the um, the different vehicles work. So T-34s in Russian tanks are particularly tough. If you take a duck and try and shoot uh, German tanks, wow, you just punch them. It's like they're not even got any armor. Um, but yeah, you can just practice away. So that's version 2. We've talked about the first two methods the quick mission method and joining the multiplayer 72 AG training server. I'm now going to talk about two methods that are maybe slightly controversial because they use the game engine a little bit to our advantage and some people might think it's cheating but I think anything goes for this. So we're going to go into multiplayer and dogfighter. And we're going to join an actual normal server. I say normal. So Wings of Liberty is the server I usually fly on and at the moment they're playing a map called Height 242 M Sum. So let's click to join that and what we'll see is every time you join a multiplayer server we have this screen. Well, this is actually downloading the map onto my computer. That's what it's doing at this point. So let's see what 42, some height 42, no sorry height 200 looks like. With the map loaded if we click on a base um, it will update with what we can fly and we'll also be able to see how many players are on it if we look. The server's not particularly busy, but there are still 10, 10 Russian players there, if I'm flying on the uh, blue side, 10 Soviet players, sorry, um, who might come and shoot me down. And what, all I want to do is I want to get into Sige, I want to jump in my little duck, uh, fly up to this transport column and practice attacking it. So how can I do that without being harassed by the enemy at all? Well, we know that the map is height 200, so we're going to leave the server. go on to dogfight and I'm going to create my own server. Um, I have a password on there as well and there's my test flight server or KG1, gosh my old tag. Let's uh, GW, oh gosh, there we go. And you can set how many players you want but this is just for me and I would, you know, don't, what I'm about to do here, don't do and have like all of your squadron join particularly or run a server because we are we're borrowing somebody else's map here and and all of their server settings and they've spent a lot of time and effort doing this and this is just for me to train or maybe me and a wingman a uh, small unit to train so we get better at being um, the ground attack pilots on that server and what you can do is that 
that download screen when we saw the picture of the plane it was downloading the map onto my computer and these are all of the missions that I've ever played on all the different servers that are downloaded and they're in my available missions if you create your own missions you can also put them here too but we were playing height 200 I think it organizes it by date because sometimes there are different versions so let's pick that one and we'll add it to the rotation so this is height 200 if we scroll further down you can these are basic settings that you can set on um, but you can lock the payloads uh, and fuel loads you can also we still got the realism buttons that we had before you can make yourself invulnerable and breakable and limited ammo and limited fuel have everything on object markers and bombing assist so let's turn object markers on which we would never normally have always useful to have allow spectators particularly on a video something like this you can have external views and there we go and then if you continue here we are we're in the game so it's exactly the same as we saw it before there are all the targets there are all the bases if I click on site I have the options that I had before if I go on to statistics there are no other other players because it is just me and I've password protected it so no one can join me I can just carry on to my own heart's content and I won't I won't do it but if you go airborne you know get in a duck fly up to the transport column when I get there it'll have all the markers on it those little red dots so I could start killing those and I'll see when they die I can practice killing AA and everything's great the only thing you can't do um, in a quick mission you can speed up time when you're running this in the kind of server mode you can't speed up time so I will actually have to get in AHS129 I can't start in the air I'd have to fly up to the target and then shoot it if I accidentally crash on the way I'm gonna have to start again if I get shot down I'm gonna have to start again and that kind of thing but it is very useful for practicing so if you wanted to hit the factory for example in bombers you can get an actual field you could have two or three of your bomber pals come on you could fly an actual full sortie get used to seeing the target see what the layout is like uh, and then be better and then when you see this map again on rotation you go oh right oh yeah it's the factory down south we know right let's get airborne from site we know we by here we'll be at uh, what two and a half thousand meters we can run in this way and that kind of thing uh, we know that the factories run north and south if you hit this that and the other and it just makes you a slightly better player and that's that's the third method so it's still it's a little gamey because you're kind of using the assets you have external views as well um, so you could for example if you flew over the factory in a fighter you could switch to external view and then hit that F11 key and then your camera is unlocked so you can zip around with the camera you could line up really good screenshots and then make recon photos for your squad mates for example you know put draw take a fly right over it mark all the AA guns um, and everyone can see what's going on and that's another useful tool but there is another way we can do it and we are going this is the fourth method the fourth and final method we're going to do is we're going to actually go into the mission editor software and we're going to have a look at how the mission designers have put together their targets um, it's a very good way of generating um, recon photos so we we played the in-game version we had to fly to the target um, and generate all those things uh, you may find that when you get to a target you don't really know what's a live what's you know what's a real target you're supposed to kill and what's just background scenery this is a very good way of learning how the mission designers of your server have put together their maps and every server I found tend, the targets tend to be a little bit different so what you think is a real target in Wings of Liberty you'll get to finish for the finish server which is very good as well um, their targets just look different um, so we're going to go into the bowels of the game and we need to open the editor and it's in this location it should be in wherever you've installed it this kind of location maybe not on this drive but in there you may not have these this is just um, a campaign generator external software so you may just have bin data and screenshots we want to go into bin and editor and we're going to open the the actual editor this editor won't open while you're in game it uses the same actual engine so you can't be flying and have the editor open at the same time and we are going to open so it says so we need to open uh, almost the same window so it's Stalingrad data multiplayer dogfight and when you go in there it's like oh well I don't have any mission files but as long as you know what the name is or if you type a couple of letters it'll come up so we were playing height 200 so here we go height 200 
uh, and you saw when we were playing it had two height 200s when we were doing it that's because we've got version 4503 and they've I've also played it with version 4505 so they've updated it so I could actually delete those other ones but we're looking for the msbins so 4505 and we're going to open that so while it's editing, so this is not a tutorial on how to use the editor that would, gosh, that would be a couple of hours of video on its own. This is just very simple how to just look around at a target and see, maybe generate a screenshot or see what is real or what is not and what is a tough target and what is an easy target. So we just let it load. It's a little slow. There we go. So the first things I tend to do is bring up the mini map and bring up the normal map and then we kind of just have to drive around until we see what is. So this is this is that mission and we kind of have to orient ourselves. So this red is German or uh, Axis. Red target. Anything with a red box around is an Axis target. Anything with a blue box is a Allied target. So this is an airbase. So this is where we were going to spawn and we were going to go up to the vehicles, let me just zoom out a little so it's quicker, they're blue so that looks like a long line of vehicles. Okay, So that's not that impressive at the moment so let's click here and now this is this is the target, this is what the mission generator, whoever wrote this mission did for us. If we zoom right in you can see all of the vehicles individually. So we have our little staff cars, we've got some trucks, and if we zoom across, we can see rocket launchers, MRLSs, and we'll just move on down. So it's a long line. Oh, so that is an anti-aircraft gun. And if you click on its little icon, it'll say it's a ZIS 72K. And if you right click on advanced properties, you can even go into how tough is this going to be? It, what's its AI set to? And its AI is set to normal. So we know that that's just a normal AI, uh, normal anti-aircraft gun. Sometimes they're set to um, high or low. And there we go. So we've got more vehicles in a row, more vehicles, lots and lots of trucks, lots and lots of trucks, and we can get a really good feel. So and there's another AA. Um, what's this one? Another ZIS-72. Another ZIS-72. Right-click on Advanced Properties. Again, it's just set to normal AI. There's nothing unusual there. And it's at the end. There are some sneaky vehicles out in the open here, which we may well have missed, and a few more on the road. So just looking at that without cheating too much more than we kind of already are, we can see there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 vehicles in all. Um, Normal vehicles kind of appear as houses, which is weird. It's just it, it's a block, and then things like AA guns and armored cars and tanks uh, appear with a little truck icon. So we can see there's two two targets of interest, and then lots of others. And the other thing you can look at, without we're going to try not to cheat too much and go into all of the roots of everything on this one, is if you wanted to know how many of these vehicles or targets would you have to destroy before this target closed. Um, how much work are you going to have to do? You can look for trigger timers and counter timers. Um, that's just a alert timer for this one. I won't show you what that says because it's really cheating. Um, but here's a trigger timer and if we right click on that one it says 17. So if we kill 17 of these 26 vehicles this trigger timer will trigger. It will activate this and it will put up a message. What does this one say? It says our transport column has been destroyed. So we know we have to kill at least 17 vehicles to close that target. Um, let's see if I can find a ground target. So this is another useful one. So this is an artillery target. It's very hard to find all of the targets when you actually get to the area. But if you use this version, uh, well, let's get rid of the little mini map so you've got a bigger screen we can see how the target is laid out so we can see that there are blocks so if it has a green border like this it is just like a like a default building block it's like the houses the towns and things uh, there's a church there it's not a target if 
if it has a red border around the outside it's an actual building block target so this is telling us that these these are things that we need to blow up and with, that's confirmed by it has a pink line and pink lines are linked to counters so we know that killing this is going to set is going to do something for us um, we can see that there are vehicles hidden if we zoom right in you can see there are vehicles hidden there we can get an idea of where the layout is uh, we can see where the air guns are by looking around so here's an air gun okay, flak 38 and if we click on the properties it's set to normal again so it we're not expecting anything overly fierce but what you can do is if you turn off all of these lines so what I do for my squadron occasionally is turn off all this lot get rid of everything so now we have as if we'd flown over the top in a reconnaissance aircraft and if you zoom in a little bit so that the icon the vehicles render in you can do if you use snip and sketch which comes with windows or just use print screen you can build up a map of where all the things are so here's the artillery along the edge there are trucks next to it there's more artillery along here we've got this AA gun in the field you could draw a circle around the nets for your guys there's these trucks weirdly hidden in the woods uh, and then we could mark these out and then you just share that with your guys and everyone knows exactly what it is they've got to hit when they come to the target uh, let's put these back on again And let's see if we can find a bombing target. Well, there was one down south. Well, that's got to be an airbase. That's complicated. Uh, edges are normally factories. Uh, is that a factory? Or just a... Okay, so this is here's another good example. So this is um, another target. Where you've got to go hit an industrial complex. And when you get to the target, you're like, oh, I don't, you know, what is actually a target? They've got all of these green blocks so we know that green box means it's not a target so it's this is the town that's next to it we also come in here these are all they look like non-events but they have a block with a color around it so if you click on the block the targets that are in here are part of this block so these are actual buildings that can be destroyed if we click on this block again it has the blue border if it's blue or red it means it's a target so these buildings are all part of this block the fuel dumps we have some weird bits inside the hangar going on there again if we click on this this is the block and if you're not sure if you grab the corner here this and rotate it the things that move with it are part of that block so even though this building and this building they were outside of it because we can move them this is a legitimate target so if you are a level bomber again we can check these are all targets and these are all targets as a level bombing pilot so when I'm flying my 88s and uh, 111s it's very useful and I don't think particularly cheaty if you were to just take a photo of something like that a screenshot and share that with your squadron because that is like a high-level reconnaissance photo so what you can do as well is if you go into tools there is a measure mode now there's probably a better way of doing this because again I'm not a master on this but what you could do is go right as a as an as a 111 pilot I think flying through here and dropping a cluster of bombs down that line would be really really useful so if I draw a line it gives me the heading so it tells me how far away it is and a heading so if I flew over that target through that point on a heading of 130 that is a good approach line for killing that target there you go escape to finish it and we can check another one using the backspace key to get rid of it all if I wanted to fly down this line again I can do the same and on, on a heading of 160 maybe 162 it's quite difficult to fly that precisely though then that's also a good run-in heading 
for getting maximizing my attack. Um, the other thing you can do is if you know blast radiuses, um, you can measure the sizes of things. So we know that that across there is 76 meters. I'm not going to tell you the numbers because you, as part of a ground attacking training you can kind of learn that yourself but the blast radius of different bombs will affect how you attack um, a different target so you might want to hit this with two 250 kg bombs if you put one here actually maybe three this is quite a long target how many meters is it 220 meters two might get away with it so if you put a 250 kg bomb here and here even as a as a dive bomber you should be able to destroy enough of these to close that block uh, 250 kg on here probably isn't going to work no so you you would struggle 75 meters you would struggle for example with one 250 kg bomb to kill all three of these so you can plan in your head right i'm good what can i kill with what i've got and that's it, that's the final method. Hopefully that has been of some use to you. We've talked about quick missions. We've talked about going on to 72AG training server. There are other training servers that will occasionally pop up. We've talked about how to use uh, generating your own server uh, and flying any map that you have downloaded uh, in off kind of an offline mode. And we've talked about how to use the mission editor to get to know the targets better. If you have any comments or questions please put them in the comments below and I will always try and answer as soon as possible. If this video was helpful in any way, a like would be great. You can always share and you could subscribe to the channel. That is also awesome for me. Hope to see you all in the skies. Stay safe and happy hunting.